Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Controlling the lighting is a good idea in making any image. However, when working in high key, white background, it becomes critical. In this video, I show how I controlled the light fall off, contrast and depth of field with just one unmodified light source. So let me start by showing you what I've got set up already. Uh, what I've done is I've set up our subject, which is just some um, hawthorn branch, uh, which happens to be uh, coming into flower in this country at the moment, uh, with a few glass um, objects, uh, just to give a bit of contrast. Uh, and I've put all of those things uh, on this sheet of white perspex. This is uh, matte white perspex, uh, and I find for this sort of thing, uh, it actually works much better than using paper or card. And I have another piece of uh, white perspex, again matte, just propped up at the back here, just on a couple of stools. So then, moving forward to the camera, uh, on the camera at this time, I have an 85mm f1.2. Now that's an extreme aperture, and I've picked this particular lens so that I can show uh, extremely shallow depth of field and how you can control that. On the top of the camera, I have this flash sync trigger, and that is also capable of controlling the studio flash. The camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to show the results. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take a test image, uh, just with no studio flash, just to see what contamination I'm getting from the house lights. OK, so you can see from this image, there is very little getting through. But that is with the settings that I've got on the camera at the moment. So I have the shutter speed set to the flash sync speed for that camera, which is 1 250th of a second, ISO 100, and an aperture of f8. Now the whole reason that I'm using a lens which is capable of going down to f1.2 is to demonstrate the extreme narrow depth of field which is achievable at that uh, aperture. So let's just reset this to that extreme aperture of 1.2 and we'll repeat the test. Now at that aperture you can see that the contamination is quite large. Uh, this would have the effect of putting a colour cast at the very least over the image. So in order to uh, stop that happening uh, what I'll need to do is just do another test uh, with the house lights out. We'll just do that again. And there we go, you can see that with the house lights out there is no contamination to speak of, even at this extreme aperture. OK, so we're all good to go. The next thing to do would be to uh, set up uh, a light uh, to light the subject. So one of the things that I want to show is that the position of that light is absolutely critical in achieving uh, a uniform white background. OK, so I'll just place this about here somewhere. Uh, this is a uh, Profoto studio head. Uh, I'm using this uh, as an extreme case, uh, but the principle behind this will apply to any light source, whether it's continuous, um, or whether it's a flash gun, or a speed light, or whatever you're going to use. Uh, the principle behind this is exactly the same. So, with that in some form of position, uh, I'll just turn that on. There we go. Uh, and we'll just set an arbitrary energy on that. And take a test image. OK, so with these settings, we've left the aperture at uh, 1.2. Unsurprisingly, this is a complete whiteout image. Therefore, let's turn this down to a more reasonable f4. And we'll take that again. So we're starting to get something. We just need to uh, reduce the energy in the flash. So I'll take it down by two stops. So with that adjustment, the exposure is considerably better than it was. 
I just zoom in and have a look through here. We can see that we've retained quite a lot of detail in everything. Uh, the shadows are looking reasonable, uh, but I think they could be better. Now, one of the advantages of using uh, Studio Flash is that they have a uh, modeling light. So if I just turn that on, and at the same time as turning that on, I'll turn the house lights out. If I now just move this, you should be able to see how the shadows change as I move the light. And that makes a huge difference to the way that the image will look. So with that in a new position, I'll just turn the modeling light out and we'll take another image. So you should be able to see that in this image, even though I only moved the light a very small amount, I've got a huge change in the way the image looks. But you should also be able to see that in this image, um, we don't have complete white. Uh, this bit down here is white, uh, but at the back it's going to a grey. Now that is due to uh, the light fall off. Uh, some people call it inverse square law, it's exactly the same thing. So in order to be able to get a more even uh, illumination, what I need to do is move this light much further away. There we go. About there somewhere. So with that now set, I'll take another image. So now in this image you should be able to see that it is uh, considerably more even, but it is also uh, a bit darker. Now that is because of the inverse square law that I mentioned before. I've moved the light quite a long way away, so I would estimate that I need to add about two stops of energy to that system to give me the same exposure as I had before. So I'll add that now. There we go. So with that done, we'll take another test image. So there we are, the exposure in this area is about the same as it was before, as you can see from these images as I go backwards and forwards. But now I have illuminated all of the background as well. OK, so with that done, what I'd like to do is just add a couple of elements to the background, uh, just to add a bit more interest uh, in the back of the picture. So I'll just add these bottles, just here and here. Then with those set, and the house lights out, I'll grab another image. There, you can make out the uh, bottles in the background. The effect of them is very subtle, but I think it's quite important. Uh, all these branches are in a diagonal line here, and are all sort of pointing to something. So having this out-of-focus out of bottle in the background uh, I think helps the image along. If I just go to the previous one without them, uh, it's sort of lacking something, and then we have them in the background. OK, so with that uh, little bit done, it's now time to think about what difference uh, a different aperture will make. So what I'm going to do is uh, set the camera to an aperture of 1.2, Now the difference in aperture there is three stops, so I'll have to take three stops of energy out of the lighting uh, to compensate for that. So I'll just do that now. There we go. And that should give us exactly the same exposure, but with a much, much narrower depth of field. There we go. So you can see from this that the depth of field is extremely narrow. If I just zoom in onto this area down here. We do have some bits which are actually in focus, uh, but quite a lot of it is out. If I go to the previous image, you can see you've got all the rest of this in focus, uh, whereas with this one, it's just this. Now I think that's a little extreme, and if I zoom out again, you can see that you've lost the bottles in the background completely. 
So if I now go the other way and go from F4 to, say, for instance, F8, again, compensating for the uh, change in aperture with a change in energy. There you go, you can see that we've increased the depth of field quite markably. Uh, if I go back to the uh, original F4, this one, uh, you can see the effect of the depth of field on the bottles in the background and also on the various branches. This is what we had at f1.2, and this is what we've got at f8. Uh, so this has all become quite a lot sharper, uh, and in, in effect is a little bit more distracting. So the image captured at f4, uh, I think, gives the most pleasing result, uh, with the light at this position. Uh, so with that all captured, it's just time to go into Photoshop and do uh, the minimum of post-production. So here is that image opened up in Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a copy uh, of this layer, just like that. So I can work on the copy and I always have the, uh, the background to go back to if I need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add an adjustment layer and I'm just going to add a levels adjustment and I'm going to reset the white point so if you watch the numbers in the info panel you see that as I move around they are all under 255 so I find the easiest way to correct that is just go to the white point eyedropper tool and select that and then just pick uh, an area in the image just to make that the white point, like that. So with that set, you can see that now when I go around, we're a lot closer to 255. OK, so with that done, uh, the next thing that I would do is just um, whiten up this side if I uh, want to use it. This is actually just under white. Um, so I find the easiest way to do that is just to literally add another layer on top of the one we've got. Make sure that white is selected as our foreground colour. And then just click on the brush. And we're literally just going to paint onto that layer with white, uh, with a fairly large and very soft brush go, just lightening up that side of the image there. So with that completed, the, the last thing I want to do is just add a crop. Now I usually pick a ratio of uh, 16 by 9 because it fits the videos very well, but you can just use something which suits your subject. Now the other thing that I'm going to do before I uh, pick on a crop is just change the guides. Uh, the guides at the moment are set to uh, the thirds. So if I just click on this little icon up here, I can then change that to something else. And I'm going to change it to the golden spiral. OK, so with this set, uh, what I'm going to do is just adjust the handles here until this is covering the area I want. Something like that. There we go. I think that works extremely well. So I'll click on OK. And there we have it. That just shows what difference a very small change in lighting can make to your final image. And with due care and attention to depth of field, you can really bring out the delicate nature of the subject in this image. And we've ended up with a high-key piece of visual art. I quite like that. Now I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I made that, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.